Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for holding this hearing. Mr. Bonsell, welcome to the committee. Um, you know, I, I understand that shifting from a single federal contract to a multi-layered payer market is adding complexity to your distribution claims. But we are talking about a vaccine that taxpayers invested $12 billion in, a vaccine that was once $15, and now you're planning, of course, to price it at $130, despite the fact that it just costs about $3 to make. And that, as we know, that cost is going to get passed on to consumers, whether it's through higher premiums or higher administration fees. So I, I want to know, what is your answer to this committee and really to the public about the need for such a drastic quadrupling of the cost? Thank you, Senator, for, for the question. So first, just to precise some numbers, the US government invested $1.7 billion in the vaccine development. The, the rest of the amount that you mentioned was actually purchase of product, not investment in, in the development. Uh, as, as I said in my oral testimony, we decided, and this was discussed at our board, this was not asked of us by the government. We, in the letter I wrote to the government when we started discussing about procuring the vaccine in September of 2020, we proposed the discount. It was not asked of us. We discussed with our board and we said, if a vaccine work in September 2020, we had no idea the phase three came in November, the data. So if a vaccine work, we think it's our responsibility to return the capital to taxpayers. And we return, as I mentioned, $2.9 billion in discount versus the over mRNA vaccine that the government procured. So despite our vaccine having three times more mRNA in it, 100 microgram versus the other one was 30 microgram, we discounted our product to return $2.9 billion to the US taxpayer. We thought that was the right thing to do, to say thank you for the government. In addition, the government got $5 trillion of economic value, 18 million hospitalization less, the impact on humans and the cost of it, and 3 million lives saved. So in the endemic setting, the challenge that we have is, as I mentioned in my opening testimony, the waste stage, we're going to have to take care of. So first, we have to make more product than we think we will sell because we cannot have patients going to pharmacies and having no supply. And this is a very hard business, very complex, because it's a seasonal product. The FDA currently plans to tell us, they think, late May, early June, what they want in a vial. We're going to spend the whole summer making as much as we can. And what we know is the forecast is going to be wrong. The forecasts are always wrong. And so the question, to protect people, we need to make more than we think is going to be needed. That waste, we're going to have to, to pay for it. What happened in the fall of 2022, which I think is an important way to think about it, the US government purchased 160 million doses. To the last number I got from CDC, around 50 million doses got in arms. But the government bought everything. So the difference, 110 million doses might go to waste in the garbage. So saying that the cost of a vaccine before was $20, I don't think is the right way to do the cost. It's not the cost to the US taxpayer. The US taxpayer paid for everything. If you do the math, it's around $80. The cost in the fall of 22, still with five products in the value. Okay, well, I, I understand that. And I, I just have a minute here left. I want to ask a couple of questions. You mm. are talking about uh, um, get, having a vaccine accessible to the uninsured. What I'm concerned about is people hear $130 and they just don't get it because they think it's expensive. How are you going to make sure people know that you do have this program to help uninsured? So thank you for the question. And, and again, I care deeply about access and, and protecting people. That's why we said the company is, is to help protect people. We will advertise it and communicate about it uh, as we get into the fall. As you know, as of today, the government is still in charge of vaccine distribution. So we don't want to confuse things for, for the US consumer. But as we get closer to the fall, we'll make sure we get the word out. As I mentioned, we want to work with rural hospitals, community hospitals, homeless shelters, because I really believe there's a better way to give access to people that are uninsured. We have heard loud and clear that the system set up by big companies is too complicated, too much paperwork, takes too much time. Okay, I, I just want a commitment that you are going to make sure the public understands that there is a way to get this if you're uninsured, correct? Senator, we're going to work really hard to make sure that the public understand the process. <clears throat> okay, um, and my final question really is about the COVID-19 vaccine, tr vaccine trials that excluded pregnant populations, which left 
moms and their doctors with very little information to guide them. It causes a lot of confusion. And we know that pregnant patients <coughs> with COVID are at greater risk um, if, if they're infected. Uh, the, last week, actually, the CDC released some new data showing that 40% increase in maternal deaths compared with 2020, and a recent GAO report found that COVID-19 related deaths accounted for this increase. Can you just talk to us about your decision to exclude pregnant patients from trials? Yes. Thank you, Senator. That's a very important question that I care deeply about, you know, having had children. Uh, the challenge we had in 2020 under guidelines from the FDA is to be very careful, which you understand in clinical trial, the safety of a participant is <coughs> our number one priority. There was a lot we didn't know about the safety of a vaccine until November of 2020. It's like for the pediatric setting, we did those studies much later, which was hurting, you know, parents having the ability to have a vaccine for their children because we wanted with the FDA to go slow to understand the safety. I'm getting gaveled. I'm Can sorry. you just tell me that you will include a pregnant patient <coughs> in your continuing trials? Yes, and that's all. We want to include pregnant women and also the pediatric for the children. Senator Cassidy. I'll defer to Senator Tuberville. Thank you, Senator Cassidy. Uh, Chairman, Mr. Benzel, thank you for being here today. Thank you for what you did for my 